All right, guys. Welcome back to this week's episode of Video Game Archives, the podcast. Almost forgot my own name. Um, my name's Dave. I'm your host. Uh, and all right, let's get uh working. So for you uh, podcast listeners, I have a new mic that I found in my closet. So uh, let me know if this sounds better than last week's uh, episode. And for you YouTube watchers, um, yep, still using a basically a knockoff GoPro. So the video may look kind of funny, but at least you get to watch the video portion as well. Um, I am planning on cutting up the video into segments, so that way you can watch the portion of the video you might want to watch, but I'll also be putting it on as a full video as well, so you can pick and choose. Variety, spice of life. Alright, well, we have some, uh, things to talk about today. I think it's going to be another short show, maybe a half an hour, nothing too long. Alright, so, uh, I guess first things first. Let's go with some video game news. Um, so Harry Potter. What more can I say? Uh, I've played many Harry Potter games in the past, and they've all been fun, but they never really felt like you were magically in the world. Um, I played the ones for the GameCube, the Xbox, a couple PC versions. Um, but none of them ever made me feel, ah, I'm there, I'm in the castle, you know, I'm at the school, I'm at London, you know, all of that good stuff. Now, the trailer that leaked, supposedly of a Harry Potter game, hopefully, it's a game that's going to be announced soon. Um, it looks good. Like, it reminds me of, you know, playing Skyrim or Breath of the Wild. You know, you're in that world, you get to explore... I hope it's an open world game. Um, it looks very open world, but it could very well be linear too, where you know you have these open rooms you're in, but you're not really exploring so much as being led through the game. I hope you can go through the school day, you can talk to kids, you can acquire things to do, and you don't necessarily have to do the missions. Um, it'd be cool if you could play the game and do anything you want throughout the school year. But if you didn't solve the problem by the end of the school year, you failed. Um, just to give you a little time crunch to try to solve your problems. Because, you know, most of the movies started at the school year, ended with the school year. Um, I kind of hope they go with that. Uh, Shamu was like that, where if you didn't complete the game by a certain date, you failed. You could do anything you want, but you could fail. Now... With save states, could you just save it at a certain point and then goof off as long as you can and then always go back if you die? Yeah, I guess you could. Uh, but I still think that'd be cool like to time it with that kind of uh, start in the school year, end in the school year. Uh, we don't know when it's going to be set. Is it set before the movies, after the movies, during the movies, a side story? Um, I don't know. I hope it's just open world. I hope it's... Do anything you want, go wherever you want, maybe even, you know, take classes to improve your magic. So you have to learn the dark arts, you know, learn um, how to make your own spell, um, potions, stuff like that, which could help you later on in the game. That would be cool. So I'm hoping it goes that route to really make you feel like you're a student at Hogwarts. Um, will the game be good? Hopefully. It's really hard. I think for the big Harry Potter fan, they're going to like it no matter what, for the most part. Um, I think I'll enjoy the game no matter what, as long as it's not broken. Um, if you can play it, the world looks good. Like If it looks as good as the video, it'll be a fun game. I mean, I enjoyed the older Harry Potter games, and they didn't look anything as realistic as this. So, yeah, it doesn't really need to be anything special it looks like you're in the world you can do the spells as long as the mechanics are there and it works as good as say um any open world game that's out today that's in b or higher it should be fine um hopefully it's not long off but it's probably at least until e3 before we even hear anything about it uh maybe with all the leaks videos 
Warner Brothers may release a trailer early to give you a polished look of the game better, so that way they can promote it the way they want to promote it, not just through leaked videos. Um, so yeah. Hopefully, it turns out into something. Um, so, if you guys are Harry Potter fans, leave, let me know in the comments. And let me know how excited you are. Alright, so, moving on. Uh, this is not video game news, but it's a big talk. Um, it's part of my childhood. It's probably a part of a lot of uh, your guys' childhood. Especially if you're into video games, you probably went to this place. Um, so Toy, St Toy Story. Toys R Us is uh, supposedly making a comeback. They canceled their auction. Um, and they're not selling off all their brands. Uh, the brief message that they gave is... They plan on reasserting itself into the marketing, into the toy industry, and its international presence. Um, what that means, who knows? To me, it makes me think that, you know, they still own all the brand. I bet you there's still stores that they own, uh, buildings that they own, not just leased, that they have footprints that they could easily reopen if they needed to. Um, maybe the plan is, in my mind, would be to shrink the stores in half, um, especially if you had a big store like where I live. Uh, where I live, it's pretty large and a lot of wasted space. If they remodeled correctly, they could probably fit everything that it was in my toy store into half the location, and that right there would save the money. You know, they're not spending as much on rent. Uh, rent and utilities is a big issue at least any money they can save is money they can save so I think they're gonna go with smaller stores maybe not as many locations in certain states like I had a Toys R Us within five minutes of my house but then I could also drive 20 minutes in two different directions and hit another Toys R Us actually three and in, in three different directions hit three Toys R Us um, do we need that many? One in each major city in the state where I live? Probably not. Um, I know it'd be convenient, and if it wasn't in the bigger cities, less kids would uh, get a chance to go to Toys R Us. But maybe you have one big location, and then satellite locations on those smaller areas. So that way you still have a Toys R Us which is like a fourth of the size of normal Toys Toys R Us stores today. And then you have the bigger locations which are half the size of Toys R Us today. And you still have that footprint. Um, and use that as a like a home base for online shopping, pickups, returns to that way give people a chance to buy online and have a place to return it with ease. I think that would be a good way to help them. Um, and then, you know, the smaller stores have less employees, so, you know, they're saving money there. I think it's better to try to save money with less employees, a smaller footprint, and get yourself back on the path than not have your brand anymore. Um, because people are still buying toys. It's just, you have to learn how to spend your money wisely and have the stores correctly. And they're probably... Shrink the baby section. Um, we had a large baby section at our store. Our store was a Toys R Us slash Babies R Us. So, I mean, it makes sense. But the way everything was spread out and displayed took up a lot of room. I get why it would be opened up and spread out. So baby carriages, this and that. But if they stocked it better, they could shrink their stores and still carry a lot of the same items. And just help them out overall. And if they own the land and building and shrink in their store halfway, they can rent out the other side, further bringing in profit for the store, but also, especially for the individual toy stores, Toys R Us like I have, give people a reason to already be next to the toy store and be like, well, we're here, we might as well just walk into Toys R Us. That way they get more foot traffic because a lot of the Toys R Us in my area are single buildings by themselves, you know, with stores next door and like other parking lots, but... You'd have to leave that store and drive 
down to the next parking lot, where if your building was split in half and you rented out the other side, you at least have other people maybe going to that store that might have not been trying to go to Toys R Us in the first place, but now are, you know, thinking about that. So, I think that could help. I would love to see Toys R Us come back. I would even love to see if maybe for this year, they did like, um, the stores in the malls, real quick, just to get themselves, you know, a little, keep their brand recognition going, and just set up little shops in the malls for Christmas, just to, you know, have a little Toys R Us store quick satellite up and running and then gone after the holidays um speaking of that kb toys just announced that's kind of what they're doing for black Fr starting black friday they're going to set up some locations and some malls to basically use the brand the company who owns kb toys now and that's perfect it would you know at least bring nostalgia to the uh kids from the past and i think toys rush should take that uh, method and at least do that this year to kind of build themselves up for their comeback uh, even if they still own the toy stores that they own you know do a quick you know set up in the stores kind of like uh, the Halloween stores do just to help bring in more revenue obviously they're thinking about something because they know their brand can still sell uh, I think Toys R Us should have never been down this path uh, they probably should have shrunk years ago, uh, especially after all the other big box stores started closing down the last five to ten years. Uh, they should have seen the writing on the wall and got ahead of that burning bridge, which they didn't do. Um, now they're trying to make that turnaround, and hopefully that this will work. And, you know, if they got to the size of what KB Toys was in the 90s, that size store, that would still be fine. Maybe a little bit bigger. Make those like the satellite stores. If you guys haven't been to a KB Toys, um, it was about the size of um, a GameStop. Maybe a little bit bigger, depending on your GameStop. But um, it was maybe twice the size of a smaller GameStop for my area, uh, which, you know, held a lot of toys. They did the tall shelves, like 10 feet high, and they had a lot of toys. But they were in the malls, so, you know, they're, they're paying premium for those spaces. Now, if... Toys R Us can do those size stores as satellite stores in um, strip malls and stuff like that. That's probably cheaper than being inside an actual mall. And then have maybe one big satellite, one big store randomly, you know, no closer to each other than like an hour, hour and a half drive. I think that'll help them. All right. Next up, uh, PS4. So I have a PS4 and I have a PSVR. And it works great, but I hear the PS4. Pro, PS4 Pro runs it better. Um, so I've been looking to get a PS4 Pro, but I'm cheap, and I don't want to spend $400. Granted, the new bundle comes with uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which kind of offsets the price a little bit, and makes me a little bit want to go for it. Um, but right now, accordingly, in Japan, they're doing um, a price cut on the PS4 Pro. So it's almost like a $50 price cut, kind of like $400 to $350. Now, that would be awesome if that comes over here. If it comes down to $350 over here, you know, a used one for $300, that would, that would uh, entice me to buy it. Especially with the PS5 coming out soon. Well, not coming out soon, but the rumors of PS5. Uh, it would make sense for Sony to do a price cut to try to sell as many PS4s as possible and get those overstock slowly out of the way. Now, $50 doesn't seem like much when it's like, well, if you're going to buy the game anyways, you save money buying the $400 one with the $60 game. I just hope that it drops to $350 and then they still do those bundles where you get like a free game and then it's like I'm buying for $300 plus a game that I don't already have. Um, and by now, PS4 4 Pro needs to drop a little bit. Uh, the PS4 normal should be $200 at this point, and the Pro should be $300. My opinion, anyways, or what I wish so it would be easy to buy one. Yeah, so let's backtrack a little bit to uh, last week when we talked about uh, Telltale Games. So apparently they're looking for another company to hire its staff so that they can um, at least finish 
The Walking Dead for people. Which would be cool, but... Would it be as good of a game? You know, would these staff members really just be trying to finish it to get a paycheck? Or, you know, are these staff members, like, passionate about the game and that's why they want to just make it? And do people that just want to be fired want to make the game with all the heart they would have if they were at a loyal company? I don't know. Uh, if I was playing this season and I really wanted the game, I would probably be hoping for anything. Whether it's just because they're doing it for a paycheck, or if they're doing it to, for passion, or that's really your only two options. Or they're just doing it because they got nothing else to do while they look for a job, or hoping that the new company will take them on after they complete the work. I don't know, at least they're trying to do something right, I guess, in all this. Um, it's funny, because when you look at the Tall Tale games, you wouldn't think that they would be having money issues. Uh, they seem like games that would be pretty fairly easy to make compared to like the big budget AAA games. Um, I think they just got out of hand with trying to do too many um, tie-in titles. I think they probably should have did more of uh, more um, new IPs that just told a great story and did the same mechanics instead of trying to buy every single popular genre and turning them into series. Granted, I love Back of the Future. But I think they probably should have limited themselves on buying out products and went the whole Netflix original way. Did a couple of like big titles, but then brought their own in to save money. Alright, so, next up, Nintendo Switch. So, news are reporting, people all online are talking about how the rumor of a new Nintendo Switch model could be coming in 2019. Um, that seems right. Uh, new Super Mar new uh, Nintendo 3DS didn't take long for a new version or a new model of it to come out. Nintendo likes to go, you know, XL, uh, new, new XL, all these new features. So for Nintendo to do a new model, that makes sense. Now, there's a couple ways they can go about this. I would see they could do a whole new model. Where you can buy the bundle with the dock, the joysticks, the new model. Um, or they could do a... Just sell the, the actual Switch itself with no controllers and no dock. To the people that already own a dock. And then they can have... They can upgrade and just attach the controllers to it and they have the new model. That way they can keep the other Switch because it is a portable comps console. So they can have one on the dock and one just charging and switch out whichever one needs to charge, or something like that. Uh, the other thing is they could come out with a new home version that has no screen, and you it just doesn't need a dock. It just sits on the table right underneath the television, and you can just play it in dock mode. No, no need for touchscreen. There you go. How many games would be hurt by that? Probably not too many. But they could sell it at a $200 price point, and allow people to buy an extra one and have another one in their house so they can have, you know, multiple accounts going, multiple games on different televisions. Or they could come up with an upgraded version, upgraded in a couple different ways. So they could have um, a better screen. And when I say better, I mean a better looking screen or a more colorful screen or a brighter screen. Or a more efficient screen so the battery life lasts longer in the, in the um, controller. Or they could upgrade the battery. Make it so it lasts longer. Um, they could also make it so that it's smaller. So what if it was a Nintendo Switch Mini? So it could be even more portable. And you could bring it with you wherever you went. Because to me, the Switch isn't really portable. I can't stick it in my pocket. Now, if they could make one where you know I could stick it in my pocket, that'd be awesome. Uh, the other thing they could do is do a pro version or a new Super Nintendo Switch. Basically, more powerful. So you have the Nintendo Switch, and then you have the Nintendo Switch Pro or new, where it's kind of like the PS4, PS4 Pro, or Xbox and Xbox One X. That way, for those ports coming over, it's easier for them to port the game over, and it can just get scaled down 
to the regular Switch, but also scaled up for the Pro version or the new version and be more closely related to like the regular PS4 or the Xbox One. Uh, I think this will be more important when the PS5 comes out and the Xbox 2 comes out because can any of those games be ported over? The first, gener the first year of games, probably, but after that you'd be limiting yourself. So, by doing that, you get yourself a better Switch with, with more titles that can be ported. And if they're already making the games so they can be scaled up or down, scaling them down to the Switch normal mode shouldn't be that bad. But then at least scaling it up for the Pro will allow it for an easier jump. Uh, the other thing they could be doing is new colors. I know that doesn't really sound like a new model, but technically it would be a, a different SKU because uh, of different colors. You know, could you get the screen case in all in blue, all in red, see-through? Um, that would be cool as well. Me, myself, I would prefer either a mini or a dock or like a station that had no screen um, so that, you know, it's a cheaper price point. I could put it up into another room and then... I could play Splatoon 2 on two different TVs with someone that's here. Um, or a pro version. You know, drop the Nintendo Switch model down to 250 and then do a $300 version that is more powerful and can handle the higher end games without much of a downgrade. The other thing, too, is, you know, they could have more storage. Um, how much more storage could you add? Probably 200. And then have the SD card, and then you add another 200, you're at 400. That should be enough for most people. Uh, the SD cards are getting tiny. So maybe even Nintendo could add a slot for multiple micro SD cards, like three spots. So you can buy two, three 200s, because they're coming down to like $20, $30 in price. And then you could add three of them, and you're almost up to 700 gigabytes of space. That's, for Nintendo, that's going to be big. Um, so something along that lines would be nice. Other than that, I don't know what more you could add for it to make it a new model. Um, I heard some talking about, you know, the LCD going to a new, the newer LCDs. I don't mind the LCD. Um, I wouldn't buy a whole new model if all it was was a better screen, more powerful components to make it so it handles better end games better, yes, but not a higher end screen. All right. Let's take a little movie break. So, uh, everyone loves movies. Most people do. Um, Netflix has announced that they're buying, that they acquired the rights to Chronicles of Narnia. Now, Chronicles of Narnia is one of my favorite um, book series from my childhood. Uh, I love reading it. I have the series a couple different versions. And I thought the movie series was done for a while. After the failed experiment of the last three, uh, I didn't think they'd be coming back. But with Netflix doing it, I kind of like that. Um, I'm hoping that they do a TV series, 10 episodes, covers one book. And... I think they could easily get all the books done this time. Um, you have to see that happen where the whole movie, the whole series is made into a movie. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for that. I hope that comes comes out that way. They say maybe a movie too. I'm not sure if they like plan on doing like the Chronicles of Narnia as the movie. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and then all the books as movies. And then doing maybe like side stories as a TV series take taken inside the universe like side thing where other people have found their way into Narnia I know that kind of messed up the uh, the overall story arc of the book but it could take place after the events of the book you know maybe Narnia is reborn in some way you know where you can just be like yeah all that stuff happened before long ago blah blah blah, blah and now we're at this new world I think that'd be cool um, I like a lot of Netflix originals so hopefully, it's like all the ones that I've found, they're always pretty decent. So, 
now the next time I click on a Netflix original, it's probably going to be bad. So that's going to not be fun. All right, next on the movie list. Hollywood. Hollywood. You guys are tricky. So, Mega Man, the movie. That's going to be interesting. I don't know how I feel about that one. I hope it's good. So that way Nintendo's like, all right, let's move forward with Legend of Zelda movie. Yeah. I'm not sure how they would do it, but let's move forward with that. Um, but back to Mega Man. They're making the movie. I hope... I know they probably would never do this, but I hope at some point the mu music from the Mega Man TV series would pop on. Um, maybe on the radio, all of a sudden you hear and someone just switches it out. I really enjoyed the cartoon, how cheesy it is, but uh, I think I'd watch the Mega Man movie, but I would not expect it to be good. I mean, they can't even make a Robocop movie that good. So, how do I expect them to take Mega Man, a video game franchise? And especially, keep it kid-friendly? I feel like if they just went all out Terminator style, Robot Wars, and all that... Yeah, that could be good. But they're not going to go that route. So I'm not sure what to expect. I'm glad they're making it. I hope it does well. Um, but we know how video game franchises go. Not usually the best. Um, here's hoping, right? If I was going to do the movie, I probably would set it in the far future. And... Make it a revenge story of Mega Man going after Dr. Wily. Or he's trying to he's trying to find mis he's trying to find answers to where um, Dr. Wily is. And then, you know, as he's searching, he's getting himself make it like a Norwa movie. As he's searching, he's getting himself in trouble, firefights here and there. Um, and then and with him finally getting to the base and having to take on all the robots. And slowly, you know, going room by room. Almost make it like a Die Hard movie inside a hotel building. And each floor, he has a new villain that he's taken on. And he steals their abilities to get through it. Alright. Um, so, let's talk about the releases for the week. So this week, we got some big games in my mind that I'm actually looking forward to. A couple have already come out, so today's October 4th, if you guys are listening today. Um, so we're going to be talking about the games for October, for the first week of October anyways. And the big one for me, oh, we'll save the big one last. Okay, so. Forza Horizon 4 came out on the 2nd for the Xbox One and PC. Too many racing games. Um, I'm not even interested. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise for the PS4. Um, I'm intrigued. I haven't looked in to see if there's a demo for this game yet. Um, I always like playing demos first. If a game doesn't have a demo, I have to hear some really good things about the game to, uh, to even decide on buying it. And even then, I'll wait until it's pre-owned. And then if I don't like it, I can return it. Mega Man 11. It's finally out. That demo sold me on the game. I definitely want to pick that up. Uh, I'll probably wait for the holidays for maybe a sale price and add that to my collection. Alright, what hasn't come out yet? Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I really want to play this game. Um, I just signed up for Google's Project Stream which we haven't talked about yet. But basically, it's their way of trying to do like a cloud gaming through the web browser. Uh, kind of like on live or, you know, PlayStation Networks, now uh, Xbox Game Pass, but by Google. Um, not a lot of details out yet, but they did send a beta out, basically. You can sign up to try it out, and that game is what you can try out. I'm hoping I get the invite to play, so that way I can play it for free. And I can also test out Google's new stream. Uh, I think it's really smart of Google because, you know, if most people have the access to Chrome, 
and if it works right inside Chrome's browser, you know it's going to work perfect because Google's working with their own browser. So uh, it's not going to be like an app like OnLive. You know, they have a bigger budget, uh, more manpower, and it could be cool, especially if that means you can use it on any browser, any Chrome browser. So if I have Linux, I can use it over there, Mac, that would all be awesome. Um, now, it's going to have to work flawlessly, but you're going to have to have a great internet connection. That's the only thing I dislike, because it's almost like you add lag to the game when you have to worry about your internet connection. I like my games to be straight up, don't have to worry about the internet, and play, especially for single player games. But still, the convenience of being able to play in your browser and not to worry about your PC's power, that would open up a lot of games for me that I would normally not play because I don't like playing on my PC for that reason because I don't like to upgrade my PC very often because I usually only use it for web browsing and, you know, simple things like that. And I I just like the ability of a PS4 popping the game at work. So with the stream, if you can just turn it on and you can play the best games that are out without having to worry about graphics cards, any of that, I'd be a happy guy. All right, the last game for the week, the one that I can't wait to play and hope it's just like, not just like, but not like the last one. Uh, Super Mario Party. Um, I really love Mario Party games. My favorite ones are 3 and 5. And 4 is not bad either. I did not like the last one. Where you all got inside a car and basically just drove around the track. Or the one before that where they basically got rid of stars and coins. and mix They just, all this weird stuff. Um, I wanted to be, you collect your coins, you buy your stars. Whoever has the most stars. You win, you're playing on a game board, you're playing against each other, things like that. So as long as it's close to that style of play, that is what I'm looking for. Um, and from the reviews that have been coming out and the videos, it looks more of like a traditional Mario Party, just updated a little bit. Uh, that's what I want, and hopefully this delivers. I'm not getting my hopes too high because of the last one. You know Nintendo will throw something in the monkey wrench because they want to make the games new again. But let's just keep Super Mario Party like the older ones with new maps and new minigames. That's all you need to keep doing. I bet you this one's going to have downloadable content, season pass of some sort, and just keep adding stuff to it. Uh, so yeah, so those are the games of the week. I'm definitely thinking Super Mario Party is the top game for most people. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is up there too. Uh, so yeah, let me know guys, let me know which ones you guys like. Okay. Next up. Ah, I think that's it on the list. Um, alright guys, so that's going to be the end of the uh, podcast this week. Not too much gaming news to talk about. Um, I really like doing the podcast. I want to start a second podcast on like video game topics, not about what's going on uh, weekly on the news and stuff like that. Um, so leave a comment on what kind of topics you'd like to see for uh, video game podcasts, like you know thoughts on retro gaming, uh, emulation, um, systems that are from the past that are still good to play today, things like that. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. The podcast will be later up. On later up soon, on up soon. I don't even know. The video may take a little bit longer because I want to add a little bit of graphics to uh, the things I was looking at. So uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, please subscribe and hit that bell. Like my videos. Like the podcast. Subscribe to that as well. And follow me on my Facebook and my Twitter. Uh, video Game Archive. All right, guys. Have a good night.